we're going to be dealing with the challenge of determining, you know, at least when we when we incorporate some more strategies and techniques into into our learning. Uh, when is it appropriate to use integration by parts and when is it appropriate to use something else? So we have two strategies that we can choose from at this point. Really, actually, if you consider just general knowledge a strategy, it, which I guess it really wouldn't be, but um, if that's the case, then you might consider that like another approach that you could take. Uh, but that, that, I mean, if you know a rule that involves e to the x times the sine of x, then, you know, more power to you. I don't know a rule like that. Uh, so your choices at this point would be use substitution or integration by parts. So you, you would look at use substitution, for example. Can I define a u in such a way that its derivative would cancel the other part of the integral? So let's say I chose sine of x. Its derivative is not going to help me cancel e to the x. If I chose e to the x, its derivative is not going to help me cancel sine of x. Okay? So u substitution would not be, a, uh, not be an appropriate course of action here. Right, so at this point, because we're only limited to those two reasonable strategies, we would, we would go with integration by parts. Right? There'll be other approaches that we incorporate down the line, but those, um, you know, battles for a different day. Anyway, we're going to define a U and a DV. And again, the U should be something that you can, and start off with, can differentiate, right? Ideally, it would make the situation simpler, right? It would make, uh, you'd, you'd get a simpler function, so your subsequent integral would be simpler than what you started with, right? The dv should be something that you can integrate, but it should not make the integral any more complicated than you started off with, all right? Polynomials, again, I talked about this yesterday, just by increasing the power, you didn't make anything more complicated because it's still power rule, right? In this case, this is one of those iffy situations because, well, you take the derivative or antiderivative of e to the x, the situation doesn't get easier or complicated, uh, or more complicated. If you take the derivative or antiderivative of sine of x, same deal. All right, so it becomes a question of where would you want to place, we'll start with the e to the x. Well, personally, I, I would prefer to place that in the antiderivative part. And my rationale behind that is, yeah, it, it, it's going to be easy to take the derivative or the antiderivative of that, right? The sine of x, yeah, it's not difficult to take the antiderivative of that, right? but it's, it's easier, even if it's ever so slightly, it is easier to find its derivative than its antiderivative, right? Even if it's just by a smidge, right? Tie goes to the derivative, right? So that's what we're looking for here. Just anything that would be more advantageous to us. Now, it is possible that this is a, a bad choice. If that's the case, then we'll do it again and switch them around. But you have to have a, an approach, you know, some, some consistent approach. And so that, that's the strategy that you want to have in mind, right? You want to make things easier through your derivative and don't make things more complicated through the antiderivative, right? So we'll go through the, the process. du equals cosine of x dx. Here we're integrating 1 dv and e to the x dx. So that's gonna be v equals e to the x. All right, and again, we leave off the, uh, the plus c until the very last step. All right, so the rule, the integral of u dv is equal to uv minus the integral of v du. In this case, it's e to the x sine of x dx is equal to uv, so e to the x plus e, sine of x, minus the integral of e to the x cosine x dx. Alright. And this is the moment where you might start second guessing yourself. Because you'll look at this and say, well, that didn't work. Because this doesn't look any easier than what I started with. I couldn't find the antiderivative e to the x sine of x, 
So how the hell am I going to find the antiderivative of e to the x cosine of that? Perseverance. All right. <laughs> That's the name of the game when it comes to, especially with trig related integrals. So what you're going to have to do here is take it a next level or take it a next step. We'll define a u as cosine of x and dv again as e to the x dx. All right. After you see this in action, you'll see why it works the way it does, and then it'll become a little bit more obvious how I knew to take it another step. All right. So still the same idea. Take the derivative, take the antiderivative. We're looking at du equals negative sine x dx. Antiderivative of 1 dv is going to become v. Antiderivative e to the x dx is e to the x. All right, so this is where I'm really just looking at, again, it's the same rule. e to the x cosine of x dx is going to become, now it's my new u times v, so e to the x cosine x. minus the integral of v du. So that's going to become minus negative, so the two negatives will account for each other in a second, e to the x sine x dx. All right, so those two negatives will cancel to a positive. All right. So then it's like, ah, oh, there's so much going on. I don't know. I hate this. Let's, let's start piecing it together because that e to the x cosine of x integral equates to this. All right, so that whole thing can go in here. So I'm going to rewrite the whole shebang. Yes, it is a shebang. That's the, the technical definition of it. Super. Can't see more than two feet in front of me, but I see her. So, e to the x sine of x dx is equal to the e to the x sine of x minus all of this stuff. All right. So, e to the x cosine of x plus the integral of e to the x sine of x dx. All right, I'm going to simplify a little bit more, rewriting the whole thing again. All right, it doesn't really seem necessarily important at first why I would write the whole thing every single time, especially the left-hand side. Couldn't I just write the right-hand side? But it's in this last step that hopefully it becomes clear why I was writing the whole thing. Because you notice that you have like terms on both sides of the equation. I have an integral of e to the x sine x dx on the left-hand side and a negative e to the x sine of x dx on the right-hand side. So what I can do is add the integral of e to the x sine x dx, both sides of the equation. <coughs> and so we'll get two of them. So if I want to get the integral e to the x sine of x dx all by itself, my final step, well, still have a little teensy tiny step after that, but the, the last major step would be to multiply both sides by one half or divide by two, same deal. All right, so multiply both sides by a half. 
and you get final answer of e to the x sine x dx as an integral equals you can distribute the one half if you want I'm not gonna one half e to the x sine x minus oh, six oh, that's funny I mean only to me though I can tell by the lack of laughing there it is plus C All right, so multiply both sides by one half. I rewrote it, and then I just tacked on the plus C at the end. That required a knuckle crack at the end. Look at that.